The UEFA Champions League is one of world sport's greatest trophies. It's one of the most prestigious in world football and it has been lifted by a legend. This year we had an unprecedented and probably the one of the most surprising competitions in years. And of course we had a disruption in the middle with the COVID-19 pandemic. But today I wanted to go through and review the entire competition in its entirety. So here it is. This is the UEFA Champions League 2019 to 2020. So we actually started off Champions League journey on the 25th of June, which was about 14 months ago now, which was it was a long, long time ago. Then we go all the way to September to the group stage. So what happened in the group stage? Well, let's go from a group by group rundown of how every team performed in the group stage. So let's start off with Group A, which was PSG, Real Madrid, Club Brugge and Galatasaray. Now everyone kind of expected PSG and Real Madrid to dominate. They did. They ended up PSG on top of that group, Real Madrid in second. Probably most disappointing for Real Madrid because they knew that they could probably, you know, get through that group quite well with Zidane. Zidane's back in the, at the back of the helm. Um... Of course, PSG and Real Madrid, of course, they're bearing scars from what happened last season in the Champions League, if everyone remembers uh, Manchester United's comeback at Parc de France, and Ajax absolutely rocking the Bernabeu with a 4-1 win, which was absolutely incredible. Both, both games absolutely incredible in their own right. Um, PSG probably were one of the best teams in the group stage, and we'll come on to that, but the best team in the group stage in a bit, but... Uh, PSG, five wins, one draw. It's one of those kind of um, incredible feats uh, for them. And I think, you know, they, they did brilliantly. The entire group stage, only one draw against Real Madrid. It's quite remarkable, really. But Real Madrid, I think they were disappointing. They weren't, they didn't live up to expectation. It was kind of a bit like last season where they were a bit sluggish, a bit slow in the Champions League. But, they got through, and that's important as well. Um, Club Brugge, they were they had an okay European season. I think they got they got to the um, Euro. They went into down to the Europa League. They had an okay um, an okay tournament really, or an okay European season. They had to qualify, of course. They didn't get group stage football, I don't think. But in such a group that we get three draws, that's highly impressive. I mean, really, hats off to them. Um, Galatasaray as well, um, not the best, but they got a draw, I think, against, uh, I'm going to have a look here, they got a draw against Club, uh, no, yeah, they've got two draws against Bruges, so, to be honest, a big, big European season for Club Brugge and Galatasaray, but PSG and Real Madrid, they stormed with this group, and they certainly did with, you know, anticipation that they wanted to be the kings of this competition this season. Now, Group B, uh, Bayern, Tottenham, Olympiacos and Red Star Belgrade. Probably, this group really wasn't the most competitive of the lot. Uh, Bayern stormed it, six wins, unbeaten, no, well, invincible really, Bayern. Uh, 24 goals scored, five away goal, five uh, goals conceded, whatever you call it. Um, but Bayern were incredible. 7-2 seven two, seven two win against Tottenham. Now, the thing about Tottenham, Tottenham actually did surprise me a bit. I thought they would perform better than just three wins. I I, I wouldn't have, you know, I think they got a, I think it was a, uh, have a look here. Tottenham got a draw against Olympiacos 2-2. Two, two. You can't be drawing those sorts of games against Olympiacos. I know Olympiacos, there's a lot of fans up there. And Olympiacos, hats off, you, got a, you did brilliantly to get through the Europa League. I mean, as unfortunate as it sounds, I would have, Loved you to stay in the Champions League and challenge, you know, the greats of European football. But this Bayern team were incredible. And Tottenham, they were in... They got to the final. They were expected, can Pochettino build on this and continue onwards? But it didn't happen. Spurs were terrible. And I'm not going to... Three wins against uh, Olympiacos and Red Star Belgrade with the only wins they got, they never got beat Bayern. If you want to be, if you're finalists, 
from the previous season. You want to be beating the best in Europe. That's not acceptable, really, from, from Pochettino's side. Um, so, and to be honest, in Pochettino, he lost his job for it. And for not, you know, performing well in the league. For league, he didn't perform as expected, probably, in the Champions League. But, yeah, Bayern, the story of Group B is Bayern. They took it by storm. 7-2 win, brilliant. I mean, well, well, well played to Bayern Munich. Now, Group C, this was a bit closer than expected. Manchester City, Atalanta, Shakhtar Donetsk and Dinamo Zagreb. Now, Manchester City, they also went unbeaten in their group uh, with 14 points, 4 wins, 2 draws. And everyone kind of expected Man City to top this group. Um, and it's, a, it's a trophy that Pep Guardiola has wanted for so long. And um, Atalanta, they were first time. So this is this is one of those fairy tale stories. Atalanta were brilliant. I'm not going to take that away from them because they were absolutely fantastic. Yes, they lost the second most amount of games in this group with three in with At Atalanta and Dinamo Zagreb lo losing both three games each. But Atalanta were. Were incredible. They got. Uh, I'm going to have read off the results. One one against Man City, which was really important draw that that for them. Um, then Atalanta beat Shakhtar three nil, and Dinamo Zagreb four nil. I think I'm going to read off that one. I think or it could be Zagreb four. I I can't remember. I'll have a, I'll have a look later. But um, they did. Atalanta did a brilliant brilliant job. You cannot take that away from them and say they didn't do as well. Because to get to the knockout phase, when you're in your first season of Champions League football, that's incredible. That that That's probably done beyond belief. Um, but yeah, City, City definitely took this group by storm. 14 more points than, than Atalanta double, that's about actually the tally. So... Man City hats off, and uh, Atalanta definitely big hat off. Now, Group D, Juventus, Atletico Madrid, Bayer Leverkusen, and Lokomotiv Moscow. Now, Juventus and Atletico, I thought this was going to be a close group because Bayer Leverkusen, they've had um, some, maybe some surprising seasons in the past. And I thought this might be a resurgence of German football in, in European competition, of course, because it was set to be a brilliant year for them. Um, Juventus, unbeaten as well, 5-1-0, five, five, win draws loss. Um, but the big surprise was Atletico Madrid. I thought they'd perform better. I honestly thought they would. They were everything to suggest that Di Diego Simeone had that kind of um, spice factor about his side. Uh, Bayer Leverkusen, they could have done better, but I think the Europa League kind of suited that team, um, or so suited their performances in the Champions League. And Lokomotiv, they got one win. I mean, I think it, that was against. Um, but that was against Bayer Leverkusen, and they played away from home, I think. Um, but that was a brilliant, it, it, it was a good group. I mean, Juventus and Atletico Madrid, two big teams, Ronaldo versus Diego Costa or Jao Felix, um, whoever you want to, whoever you want to compare to on the, uh, on that, on those two sides. But um, yeah, it was really good. I think um, Juventus and Atletico, definitely, they were set to go through in this group, really. Now, Group E, if you're a Liverpool fan, or Napoli, or Red Bull, Salzburg, or Genk, there were some huge surprises in this group. Red Bull, Salzburg, of course, they had the emergence of Erling Haaland, who was an absolute goal machine in this group, which was absolutely stunning. I mean, um, Salzburg were, they were brilliant. You cannot, Salzburg were another surprising side, in my opinion. They went to... Anfield and came out with a 4 3 loss. Going and scoring 4 3 free goals at the cop, that's that's incredible. That's brilliant stuff. I mean, 
RB Salzburg, I know they were, you know, the, that was one of those, that RB Salzburg game against Liverpool when they visited and went won the 4-3, that was the game that helped, uh, I believe, was the, the big factor in Liverpool signing uh, Jan, Jan, in January, uh, uh, Takumi Minamino, I think, uh, Minamino, and, uh, you know, you, uh, Salzburg were fantastic, um, but one thing that did shock me was Liverpool not going unbeaten. You're the holders of the competition, and there's teams with better form records out there than you, you know, doing these sorts of things. Their loss to Napoli was shocking. How can you know you let? How can you let a team, you know, dismantle you like that? Or you, you know, I think Liverpool had a penalty against them or something like that. Napoli got one and scored from the penalty spot. But it was very surprising. I didn't think Liverpool were, you know, I thought Liverpool they're going to be unbeaten in this group. It's Napoli. It's RB Salzburg. It's Genk. It's not like it's going to be, um, you know. It, it was it just surprised me really. Liverpool going top though, I think they deserve the top top spot, but highly surprising in my opinion from Group E. And now on to Group F. Now if you are uh, if you watched the draw back in set I think it was August, late August last year, you'll remember Slavia Prague's um reactions in a way to being given this group of Barcelona, Borussia Dortmund and Inter Milan. Now, this was one of the hardest groups in the competition. Um, I will explain in a minute, but this wasn't actually the... This was probably the second hardest group I'm, I can think of um, in the Champions League. I'll explain in a minute. But Barcelona going unbeaten, 14 points, 4 wins, 2 draws. Fantastic performance from Barcelona in the group stage. They've done it again. They qualified for the round of 16. But... It's not good enough, um, in my opinion. I think for Ernest, I think Ernesto Valverde he got sacked and they replaced him with Kike Setien uh, just before the round of sixteen. But Valverde he did a brilliant job to pull through this group. Um, we've probably not one of the best Barcelona sides we've seen in years. Um, Borussia Dortmund three one two wins lost draws. Um, they did brilliantly, I think Dortmund. I think everyone expected Dortmund to go down to the Europa League, but I think the big shock was Inter Milan. Inter Milan had a big rebuild over the summer, and you know you don't bring in big signings like a let or like uh, Sanchez, Lukaku, um, Nico Barella was also one of those um, in there as well, and don't get to the to the Champions League knockout stage. It's unbelievable. I don't. I couldn't believe Milan got knocked down to the Europa League because it was highly surprising for them. I know, you know, the Europa League finals a few days ago, and Inter Milan got there and lost three two to Sevilla. But you don't go that for a team of Inter Milan starts yet. Why do you? I don't think the Europa League good enough for them. Uh, no, not Europa League's not good enough for them. Sorry, um, the Europa League is. The Europa League's their level. Um, I think I don't think the Europa League's their level. They need to be up at the top, at the top of the um, of the, the, the football pyramid in the Champions League, in the knockout stage, and they probably will next season. But Slavia, they did really well to get two draws in that group, and two lost hats off to them as well. You know, I know it was a bit, a bit of a surprise for Slavia fans, but um, yeah, they did actually really well. I, I big hats off. Group G, this was probably the third hardest group in the Champions League. RB Leipzig, Lyon, Benfica and Zenit St. Petersburg. All four teams are probably the same level of strength, in my opinion. That might change for some of you in the comments. If so, let me know. Um, but three wins for Leipzig, very good for them. I think Leipzig, Leipzig are going to become a force in the future and they'll be like Man City, PSG, for example. Formed in 2009, um, it's probably one of the greatest road to glory stories. If you're playing football, if you played football manager before, you'll know how much it would probably mean for a team like Leipzig, if you're a manager, to get to to win your group in the Champions League. But um, Lyon was also a big surprise. I think they didn't have the greatest league form this year. Um, they finished seventh in the league, I think. But uh, 
Benfica were also a big surprise. I expected Benfica to go through, but they actually finished level with Zenit, so they were on points, and they only went through on uh, head-to-head points, which was kind of shocking, really, for, for Benfica. I, I thought they'd do um, a lot, lot better. Um, but yeah, so Benfica went to the Europa League. Zenit, I think, would feel hard done. But Zenit actually were all right. I think they did they did some good performance. They made some good performances um, to kind of explain it. Um, okay. And then, welcome to the hardest group of the Champions League, last but not least, Group H, Valencia, Chelsea, Ajax and Lille. Now, this was one of the hardest groups probably to get out of, and I'm not saying that because it was tight and it had 11-11-10 as the, the final standings, but one shock, I think, for this group was Ajax. Ajax not getting out of the group is huge. You can, if you're a Champions League semi-finalist from the previous season, Yes, I know Ajax had big departures, but you can't let yourself go out of the Champions League group stage if you're a semi-finalist. I know you want to go further and you want to get to the final. Big clubs like um, like Ajax in, in the Netherlands, are, they, they're, they're expected and they should go further. Um, Valencia, though, that's a huge surprise. To go top... Um, have beat Chelsea and Ajax, who are regular Champions League teams. Valencia aren't. They've not always been in the Champions League, uh, Valencia. They've sometimes been Europa League. Um, yeah, it's huge. I think, um, you know, Chelsea probably could have done better. I know it's her first season for Frank and his, uh, his young squad. But next season, they'll be a force, I think. But, um, yeah, hats off Valencia. Commiserations Ajax, I think. Lille weren't really a force. I didn't really expect Lille to really do very well in this group. Um, you know, they came second in Ligue 1 the previous season, but I didn't think they'd do very well um, because France would just poach on them in the transfer market. And then we come to the knockout phase. Now, if you've followed the Champions League for years, you'll know the knockout stage is a two-legged affair. Sometimes, however, this year we had to make exceptions. And... Um, majority of these games actually became, um, well, the, from the quarterfinals onwards, there was single leg ties. They never, um, they weren't able to complete a dual legged tie. And that brought some shocks, of course, to, to the system for some teams who felt they might be able to actually get it back in the second, in the second half of the, of the tie, really. But uh, to put it lightly, um, let's start off with Tottenham Hotspur versus Leipzig. Um, Tottenham Hotspur, of course, before this match, they'd replaced replace Mauricio Pochettino at, uh, at White Hart, not White Hart Lane, Tottenham Stadium. I can't remember what they call it now. We'll just call it White Hart Lane just for the nostalgia. But um, a 4-0 aggregate win, you cannot be letting that happen as you're a Tottenham Hotspur and you're a previous finalist from the previous season. That's shocking to go out to a team like Leipzig when you're a finalist from the previous season. That's huge. That's absolutely huge. Um, anyway, uh, let's move on to Atletico Madrid versus Liverpool. Now, I watched this game. It was a huge surprise to see Liverpool go out like this. The first leg, of course, was 1 0 to Atletico Madrid. They had a, I think it was a, I can't remember his name, Sal Niguez, um, Sal Niguez header, and 1 uh, 0 in the first leg at the uh, Wanda Metropolitano. Then when they went to Anfield, 3-2 to Atletico Madrid in extra time. Shocking. Liverpool cannot be letting that happen. And as much as there was something in the um, in the news about this game that actually said that um, that COVID um, cases went up after this match in the UK. Do I think that match still should have gone ahead? No, I don't. For moral reasons, this that second leg of that tie should never have gone ahead. Might have that been Atletico Saviour? Yes, it very might have been. But Liverpool, I think, wanted, wanted to go ahead with this um, tie. And, you know, it, did it did it provide consequences? Yes, of course it did. I, I don't think anybody would have um, would have said otherwise. But, um, 
yeah, Atletico, they, they were shocking. Um, they're, they're not, they're not Atletico, Liverpool, they were shocking. I couldn't believe it. Holders going out in the round of 16, it's, it's unheard of these days. And now then on to Atalanta versus Valencia. Now, Valencia topped their Group H, Atalanta second in Group C. They were probably, um, this was probably a tie where everyone thought, oh my goodness, Atalanta, they might go through here. They might get a Champions League quarterfinal on their first time. And they did it, 8-4 on aggregate. Wow. The second leg of this game was um, incredible, but it was behind closed doors at the Mestalla in, uh, in in Spain, with Valencia, really. But... Um, yeah, we we all think I think we all think that uh, Atalanta were one of those sides who, you know, they could be the big story this season. Could I? They could be. Like, could they be like last season's Ajax? But Valencia, Valencia's. I I don't think Valencia would have got past this team, this Atalanta team. They were such a brilliant bunch. Um. And of course, Atalanta wanted to do it for home in Italy because they had such a big uh, COVID spike back in March. And as important as that is, um, yeah, I think um, it, it was shocking. I, I, everything that happened after that, I think Atalanta deserved to go through. Um, anyway, on to Borussia Dortmund versus PSG. Now, that, was, that first leg was... Um, was incredible. Haaland came in, did that, and hammered into, and it was a brilliant, brilliant performance from Erling Haaland. And proved why he, he could be one of the world's greatest strikers in, say, five years' time. But PSG, they didn't want to go out fighting. They, did, uh, they didn't want to go out um, with Wimper. They wanted to go out. They wanted to go fighting for this tie. They remember probably what happened last season with Manchester United when they got knocked out in the Champions League round of 16. This time they went one further and they deserve to go one further. 3-2 on aggregate. Probably one of the best games of, or one of the best ties of the round of 16, um, without a doubt. Uh, of course, with the second leg being played behind closed doors, it wasn't really um, to be enjoyed by fans, really. But um, I think with the whole situation, it all kind of uh, blew over. Um, Real Madrid, Manchester City, four two on aggregate to City. They deserved every little bit of it. I couldn't believe Rafael Varane made such a mistake in a way um, in that second leg. But the first leg, Ramos getting sent off. That was the whole. That was the turning point for the entire tie. You wouldn't have been. I I, I didn't believe why Ramos even did it. I know he was through on goal, but you got Thibaut Courtois. He's like. He's like a stick. He's brilliant at what he does with goalkeeping. Um, yeah, Real Madrid going out there. That was a shock. But Man City had to go through. They, Pep knew he had to get this City team past this, past Los Blancos, and that and it showed really brilliantly. So um, yeah, well done City for that. Now here's the big, big, big shock. Leon versus Juventus. Now Juventus were set, I think, to go through. I predicted Leon to go through because I thought they had that little bit of a team, and you know, the second leg being played behind closed doors in Turin um, didn't help Juventus. Leon had that first leg advantage, and then who as they were in front of fans, but then when they came to Turin without the fans. You kind of lose that atmosphere, you lose that support, but you have the thought of that people are cheering on from your home. So two two on aggregate. Leon went on away on away goals. Didn't surprise me at all. So fair play, I think, to to Leon. They did brilliantly. Uh, Napoli Barcelona. Now four two on aggregate to Barcelona. Messi masterclass in that second leg. Deserved every little second of it. That that um, Barcelona. And then Bayern Munich versus Chelsea. Probably Bayern were Bayern were set through. I, I I mean it was pretty much just playing for fun or it was a training session for Bayern Munich. They were already through pretty much from the first leg, 3 0 at Stamford Bridge. And the shock was, I think, you know, Bayern 7 1 on aggregate, 
Did Chelsea really have any fight in them? I don't think they did because they couldn't get past um, that stone wall behind the defence. It was very clear that they couldn't do it. Um, so yeah. Well, that's the round of 16. Now on to the quarterfinals. Um, RB Leipzig uh, versus Atletico Madrid, 2-1. Now this was a huge, huge game. Leipzig getting through to a Champions League semi-final for the first time. Remarkable stuff from the German club. Of course, Atletico Madrid knocking out the holders. That was incredible. Okay, Atletico Madrid, that was an incredible tie beforehand. But to be shocked by Leipzig like that, that's not that doesn't sound like Atletico to me. So perhaps um and, you know Tyler Adams, he did a, it was a good goal from Leipzig to win it. So you know all credit to Leipzig, 2-1 good game but um, on to the next game then Atalanta PSG Atalanta PSG was probably game of the quarterfinals um, you cannot or uh, probably not game of the quarterfinals because we've got another big one in a minute but it was the probably the second best of the quarterfinals really you don't go to um, you know they went to Portugal Atalanta and they said let's try and get something from this game they controlled the game for 88 minutes Oh, but they controlled the game for about 60 minutes, probably, actually. And then Mbappe came on and ran them, ran them right. So, and then PSG getting two late goals. Did they deserve it? Not really. I don't think they did deserve it. Um, but at Atalanta, they just switched off. And that that's what you can't do in a Champions League tie. You've got to stay focused at all times, especially in such a big stakes game. But... Uh, Manchester City and Leon, 3-1 to Leon. Another huge shock. Um, another big side being knocked out by a by probably someone who actually actually Leon really needed this game. They really needed this competition. They needed this game in general. Because if Leon um so Leon were a team who actually finished seventh in their league up. So they needed um so they needed this Champions League victory to get the European football next season, in a way. So, to to go out, to go through three one, showed their desire, their hunger to go through in this tie. And then the elephant in the room, Bayern Munich versus Barcelona. Probably, I'm going to say it now tie of the group, tie of the entire knockout stage. You cannot, as Barcelona. A club of your reputation with one of the best players in the world as your captain. Go out there and absolutely humiliate yourself as a club like that. It was absolutely... I, I couldn't believe what I was watching. Bayern being so dominant over this Barcelona team that with legends who have probably dominated the game for years. And then Bayern just steamrolling the mate too. What Kike Setien... I, I couldn't believe him. He, why did they, you know... Kike Setien, I know he's a... He, I never heard of him before his appointment after Ernesto Valverde got sacked. But that was ridiculous. I had never seen a worse Barcelona game than that. And... Um, staggers me. I'm losing my voice having to explain it. But it was just one goal after another goal after another goal after another goal. And Barcelona... Well, you know what? Where was the desire? Where was the, you know, they were four 0 down. After, I think after forty minutes, it was like unbelievable. Um, but yeah, that <laughs> stuns me. Um, now on to the semi finals: RB Leipzig versus Paris Saint Germain. Now PSG, they got very lucky in that last quarter final against Atalanta. Would Leipzig want to share and? repeat heroics again and beat a big, big European side. Unfortunately not this time, PSG won 3-0. It wasn't one of the you know the the best teams kind of that Leipzig could really put out, but PSG deserved to go through 3 0 brilliant goal. Di Maria did a brilliant job that night. Um Bayern Munich Leon, that would have been a brilliant tie if you rewind twenty years, but we have twenty years in the in the future, from that uh, from that era of football, three 0 to Bayern Munich deserved. Leon didn't really 
it was difficult because Bayern just steamrolled. They steamrolled all the way from the Chelsea game, or actually right back to the group stage. Bayern were one of those teams that really, really, you know, enjoy their football and they love doing it. Um, but yeah, so then we go on to the Champions League final. Now I watched this game with eager eyes to uh, see what was going to happen, but um, Bayern was surprising. Bayern were, um, I think this was probably the first time um, where Bayern weren't as dominant as they had been in certain games. And Bayern were one of the, one of the few teams who can exploit, or PSG are one of those teams that can exploit weaknesses. Um, PSG are, you know, they're putting balls over the top and um, looking for Mbappe and Neymar. Um, which should Bayern probably have had a penalty? Or should PSG have actually had a penalty? I think PSG could have had a penalty as well. Bayern had a penalty after Coman got uh, pushed down. But when when Bayern, I'm going to make a make a point here. When Bayern um, scored their goal with Coman, when I saw Kimmich get that ball and whip it and and try and whip it in, I just thought goal. That's a goal straight away because. Um, the marking at the back was so bad um, for PSG that they didn't have anyone on Coman. I think it was one. It was Bayern player, Bayern, uh, Bayern player, then Bayern player, Bayern player, PSG player in the centre. And I think it was Thiago Silva. I'm not sure, but he he didn't mark effectively enough, and that's meant that Coman could get ahead to it. But yeah, it was absolutely shocking. I couldn't believe what I what I saw that entire time. Um, but yeah, but um, I mean, it's been an incredible season of Champions League football. I'm, I'm not going to you know, hold back on saying that. Do single leg ties make it better? Um, everyone asks my opinion on this, but I actually do like double leg ties. I think it makes it absolutely perfectly fair if you've got um, if you've got teams who are going to each other's home stadiums. It means revenue can be better. And there's more football in Europe. Everyone loves more football, more, more European football. Um, you can never have enough of it. So, um, this whole tournament has actually been a really big success. I've really enjoyed it. Um, I'm looking forward to next seasons. I I'm, I'm really am looking forward to next seasons now. Um, it's going to be exciting. Man United are back. Shells. Chelsea are in as well. They've got a real Chelsea are building. They are building an incredible team. Marseille are back too. Big news. We have, you know, Francois Road to Istanbul is going to become a reality, which is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, my arm really clipped there. That's weird. It's weird. But yeah, that, that's probably it for my Champions League review 2020, uh, 19, 2020. Um, Thank you all very much for watching. If you have enjoyed, make sure to subscribe, like, and uh, share for more. I, you know, um, love to see my videos going out all around the world, and you know, it's great to you know see I've got videos. I think people from all around the world and all the countries in Europe, um, continents everywhere. But anyway, thank you all very much for watching. See you next time, and uh, I guess enjoy a bit of international football. I guess before the Premier League uh, starts again. But um, I'm just going to check when the dates are for the for the first game back. Right, we'll be back, I guess, on the draw. We'll be, I think we're back on the on the 31st of September for a bit of a preview. Once we know who's going to be in the group stage, and uh, we'll have a look and uh, run down for every team, see how their summer's gone and how they've started their leagues. But thank you all very much for watching. See you next time and goodbye.